It is yes. proven that with the number of sexual partners that a woman has mm -hmm. before marriage, it exponentially increases the likelihood of divorce. No, you're right. The more, Even with just one partner and two, like low body counts. Yeah, the more premarital sexual partners you have, the greater likelihood of reporting relationship dissatisfaction, the higher likelihood of infidelity, higher likelihood of divorce. But the way the dating landscape is, is that men are not really incentivized to commit because women will have sex with a dude on the first, second, third date. So women dictate whether there is a hookup culture or not. Yeah. And I don't think yeah. men or women are particularly satisfied with status quo. So if we want to see us straying away from a hookup culture, women are going to have to lead the charge on that. Approximately one divorce occurs every 36 seconds, resulting in 2,400 divorces per day, 72,000 per month, and a staggering 876,000 annually, according to a reputable community of divorce lawyers. In the U.S., 9.2% of every 1,000 individuals undergo divorce each year, with the highest rates observed in the South and the lowest in the Northeast. CDC data reveals that Arkansas and Nevada have the highest divorce rates at 5.3% and 5.6%, while Washington stands at 4.1%. In contrast, Iowa and Illinois have the lowest rates at 1.2% and 2.2%, respectively. Several factors contribute to the risk of divorce, including age, number of marriages, education, and intelligence. Those marrying before 18 face a 48% higher likelihood of divorce within 10 years compared to those marrying after 25. Couples with previous marriages are 90% more prone to divorce, and high school dropouts face a 13% higher risk than college attendees. Individuals with below-average IQs have a 50% chance of divorce. Over the past 30 years, the divorce rate among individuals over 50 has doubled. Children often bear the brunt of divorce's impact, with daughters of divorced parents facing a 60% higher divorce rate than those from non-divorced families, and sons facing a 35% higher rate. Although adverse effects of divorce tend to diminish by the second year, children of high-conflict parents struggle to adjust. Social media plays a role, with one in seven married couples contemplating divorce due to online activities. 14% of individuals actively seek evidence of infidelity on their partner's social media, and 81% of divorce attorneys find such evidence. Finally, salary and job stability significantly influence marital happiness, with certain professions positively correlated with lasting marriages, while others are not. Based on the latest divorce statistics from the American Community Survey by the U.S. Census Bureau, occupations with the highest divorce rates include gaming managers at 52.9%, bartenders at 52.7%, and flight attendants at 50.5%. Conversely, professions with the lowest divorce rates are actuaries at 17%, physical scientists at 18.9%, and medical life scientists at a 19.6% rate. The prime years for women typically occur in their 20s, and their perceived value tends to decrease after this period. In contrast, men often reach their peak value after their 30s, with a continuous increase until their 50s. A woman in her 20s can effortlessly attract attention from men of various ages. However, as women age past 30 to 35 and experience a decline in physical appearance, the attention from teenagers, individuals in their 20s, and even older men tends to diminish, shifting towards younger women. There is a growing concern about an increasing number of young men remaining virgins under the age of 30. According to the Pareto Principle, there exists an 80-20 disparity between men and women, signifying that 100% of women seek to date the top 20% of men. Numerous studies, including one in 2020, have supported this principle, revealing that a significant portion of both men and women may not be considered appealing by the opposite gender. Research indicates that women are particularly drawn to the top 20% of men, aligning with the Pareto principle. It's crucial to clarify the 80-20 rule, as it is sometimes misrepresented by certain coaches. Surprising findings from a survey of 12,000 adults aged 18 to 49 in 21 countries suggest that fewer young people are engaging in physical intimacy. Challenges in finding intimacy for young individuals may be attributed in part to the significant number of them still living with their parents.
Nearly half of individuals aged 18 to 24 do not actively date, 30% have never been in a committed relationship, and 32% have never participated in casual affairs. The living arrangements of 55% of these individuals residing with their parents likely impact their romantic lives. Casual encounters are not as prevalent as one might assume, with only 29% of adults aged 18 to 29 having had a one-night stand, 15% engaging in multiple simultaneous hookups, and 13% having an intimate encounter with a co-worker. While most casual flings initiate in person, technology plays an increasing role in intimate behavior. Among adults aged 18 to 29 who had casual encounters, 93% met in person and 48% met online. Interestingly, 20% of guys between 18 and 29 reported dating someone they met at church. Young adults exhibit greater comfort with digital sharing compared to their slightly older counterparts. Specifically, 22% of individuals aged 18 to 29 and 16% of those aged 30 to 49 have shared a nude photo with someone. When young adults first move out, typically around age 24, many choose to cohabit with a partner. Only 13% of individuals aged 25 to 29 claim they have never been in a committed relationship. Dating and hookup apps have varied impacts on individuals, resulting in meaningful relationships for some and brief flings for others. Among adults aged 18 to 29 who have used such apps, 30% of men and 23% of women have experienced casual flings, while 19% of men and 10% of women have found committed relationships. Over the past decade, the percentage of 18 to 29-year-olds reporting no intimacy in the previous year has more than doubled. Notably, the percentage of men under 30 in the USA not engaging in intimate encounters nearly tripled between 2008 and 2018, reaching 28%. In 2008, around 10% of men under 20 reported no intimate encounters in the preceding 12 months, surpassing the corresponding percentage for women. Over the following decade, this figure for men under 30 increased over threefold while women in the same age group experienced an increase of less than 10%. However, the accuracy of these figures is questioned, considering the reporting method. Young men reporting virginity also tripled since 2008. A separate study revealed a declining trend in intimate activity among American high school students, with 41% of students in grades 9 through 12 engaging in such activity, down from 53% in 1995. Another study indicates a rising trend in abstinence among young people. Specifically, 27% of men aged 15 to 24 have never engaged in any form of intimate activity, up from 22% in 2002. Similarly, 29% of women in the same age range have never had intimate encounters, up from 22% in the previous study. Teenagers aged 15 to 19 showed the most significant increase in virginity. However, they eventually take the plunge. A comprehensive survey indicates that nearly everyone aged 25 to 44 has experienced intimate encounters. In this age bracket, 98% of women and 97% of men have participated in front-facing physical encounters, while 89% of women and 90% of men have engaged in oral encounters with individuals of the opposite gender. Additionally, 36% of women and 44% of men have experienced physical encounters from the backside. Women with college degrees are less likely to report same gender activity compared to their counterparts with different educational backgrounds. On the other hand, men with higher education levels tend to engage in more same gender activity. Interestingly, women with lower education levels report the highest incidence of same gender activity. In essence, this suggests that highly educated women are more inclined towards relationships with men, while highly educated men show a higher interest in same-gender relationships, challenging the 80-20 myth. Women often undergo a cycle, engaging in playful activities in their 20s and becoming more serious in their 30s. The challenge arises when men in their 30s, who are considered desirable catches, prefer women in their 20s. Consequently, the likelihood of most people getting married diminishes. As men age, the perceived value of marriage declines. 
If marriage's sole purpose is physical intimacy, older men may not prioritize it as much as when they were younger. Consequently, risking half of their wealth for something they no longer prioritize becomes impractical. And that's it for today on Sigma Traits. Make sure you hit that like button, smash that subscribe button, and don't forget to ring that notification bell. Support this channel through membership. You can also support through PayPal link in the description. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. See you all tomorrow.